So the, the plan for today was for me to come in here and do a back squat session, potentially even a low volume, high intensity session, kind of like a you know, pseudo you know, max single test. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so this morning a whole bunch of rubble, uh, three ton of rubble came in um, on a truck and uh, we just kind of filled the, the kind of dirt patch that we have here in the backyard. So we can park our cars in the backyard. And so I decided to spread this out and uh and so i did that for about two two and a half hours digging you know filling whatever the rubble um and i'm kind of exhausted <laughs> i'm kind of exhausted before even touching a barbell so i'm kind of not sure what i'm going to do today whether i should just do another front squat session and just you know do a whole bunch of volume and, and then call it a day but um yeah i'll show you guys what i what i've done um and I've got basically mad respect for people that do this sort of shit every day. So it's this rubble all the way through here. Um, so all of this stuff through here. So all of this was a dirt patch. Um, anyway, I don't know, maybe 10 meters by eight meters or something like that. So basically that took me two and a half, three hours um, and the whole time I was doing this I, I was kind of thinking about what I was going to do in terms of the squat session and uh, yeah the whole time I thought to myself uh, which, which direction should I take it um, and then I thought to myself man like I'm a nurse, I work at a hospital, I don't do jack shit in terms of physical uh, exertion for, for, for my daily job but for people that are laborers who are, who are you know, in some sort of trade where they have to lift heavy things and, you know, operate heavy machinery and then they go to the gym afterwards, mad respect. Like that's, that's next level. Like I truly think the laborers, laborers of this world um, are, the, are the strongest people in the world. I've touched on this before and, and people in my life know when I say that, you know, that people that are like farmers, you know, uh, butchers. I've, I've told the story previously on one of the previous videos, like last year, of this local butcher that we have here who is like maybe my height, you know, no much more muscle mass than me or, or mass in general than me. You know, a few years back we went, you know, get all this meat um, uh, to smoke. Uh, my, in -law, um, my in laws used to smoke meat. So I went over there. You know, uh, parked my car in front of this uh, side entrance and this guy was basically working at the back and, you know, kind of like dishing out all this meat. Um, and so I've gone over, paid him, whatever, like, you know, ordered all this meat. Went over to the, to the section where my meat was and he just basically passed me this, you know, slab of meat. Like, he, he handed it to me like one-handed. And so I went in with one hand to sort of to grab it off him. He almost snapped my, you know, snapped my spine how heavy this thing was. He was just throwing these slabs of meat into the back of my car like they were nothing. Um, so yeah, that's just an example of, of why and how laborers are so strong. Um, if you're digging, a, you know, digging everyday trenches and you know, working the earth, man, that's a different type of strength. It really, really is. You know, um, my, my grandma grew up on a farm and, and spent all her life basically working the earth and whatnot and uh, I always used to kid with her like if, if, if she was a little younger I would have tested her deadlift. Um, I would have, I, I swear to God she could have, she could have pulled at least 150, 160. Um, she's now too old obviously, you know, to get her to do that sort of stuff but she was just a strong lady who spent all her life basically laboring on, on the fields, you know, farming, planting, digging plowing, all this sort of stuff. So if you are somebody out there who, are, who, who has a, a physical job, uh, you know, that involves physical labor, um, you're probably, you know, you probably have a strong deadlift, number one. Um, might not have a strong squat because squatting, you know, takes the, the knee angle um, to a greater range of motion, but certainly deadlifting, certainly grip strength, um, potentially even overhead press, you know, pressing motions, pulling motions. Um, but yeah, like I, I'm, I'm exhausted right now, moving three ton of uh, rubble around. But anyway, um, I think what I'm going to do is I will still back squat. Um, and I'll just do my normal routine of back squatting, you know, sets of 20. Screw it. I'll just kind of get through it somehow. Um, I feel pretty shitty right now in Thai, but fingers crossed when I warm up, that it's going to kind of feel a little bit better. Um, so let's see how it goes.
basically, if I get 180 in the back squat, I'll be happy. I have a really low bar today in terms of performance, so let's, let's get it started. It would be interesting to know what you guys do for a living. Like I've seen you, know, you guys lift and stuff and just for my own kind of interest, um, if you want to comment down below or not, it's up to you guys, what you guys do for a living. Whether it's a physical job or whether it's a desk job. You know, if I wasn't doing squatting every day or training, I would have basically no activity in my life. Um, yeah, sure. You know, with nursing, especially in emergency, I basically spend most of my day on my feet you know, walking around stuff, maybe sometimes lifting a patient, you know, sliding from one bed to another. Um, but really, is there any kind of physical exertion that I get excited for or break a sweat or something like that? Unless it's, you know, somebody's in a real bad way and we have to do CPR. You know, I certainly remember, you know, doing CPR on one fella who we worked on for, I think, two hours. Obviously, that was rotation amongst the staff on doing CPR on this man. Uh, yeah, but so th that, was, that was exhausting, right? Like, you know, my, my body was broken after that. Um, but yeah, those are few and then far between. You know, we, we generally don't do CPR for that long. You know, somebody um, that gets to that stage. Um, but yeah, so my, my job is pretty much inactive. You know, I certainly mow the lawn, you know, dig some holes here and there occasionally. But I'm talking about like daily laboring um it's interesting to see because I, I feel like those people are stronger or uh, on average i think those people are stronger the people that spend most of their life in an office in a computer typing writing you know kind of like an office job i think those people are generally the weaker people i know eddie hall i can't remember exactly what he does but i think i think he's a diesel mechanic eddie hall I watched one of his documentaries a few weeks back and you know, i'm pretty sure he was like some sort of mechanic like lifting some heavy shit not a normal car mechanic, I'm talking like truck mechanic. Um, and he even said like, you know, most days he's freaking exhausted from the job alone and then he has to go to the gym and put in a, put in a workout at the gym. Um, but, you know, the people that work with him and don't go to the gym, I reckon they'll still be pretty strong. Because whether you like it or not, you know, these people who are lifting all this stuff, they're essentially greasing the groove. I know it's a funny thing to say. But every time they take off a tire, put a tire on, and they're, or they're screwing something, or they're lifting something overhead, or you know, they're greasing the groove. It's not necessarily training per se, as in, you know, they're going to failure, or they're going to max reps or max weight. It's, you know, work is not like that. Work is kind of like, you know, you're working within your means, in, in, you know, in such a way. Like most of the time, you're not really going to exhaustion um, with with your certain movements. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see whether you guys, whether you guys do a physical job, because then I can kind of link it in my head whether, you know, uh, 600 kilo, 600 kilo, 600 pound deadlift, and he's a bricky, you know, or whatever. It'll be interesting to really, to know what you guys do for a living, or you know, whether whether you guys are office workers and kicking ass in the gym. That'd be also really cool to understand, um, because a lot of this stuff, like you know, people aren't just born that can you know pull 600 pounds. 
you know, some people don't even train and they're walking to the gym first time and they pull big numbers. But there were some sort of athletes in their previous life, I suppose. You know, they played football or they played basketball or they played, you know, they were wrestlers or some sort of stuff like that and they're kind of retired or whatever and going to lifting and, and here they are pulling big numbers day one. It's not the same as somebody who played video games most of their childhood and then went to the gym. So it's interesting just to kind of have a profile behind somebody's, you know, training career. Um, I think it would be quite remarkable to, to hear somebody say, you know, that they have a, you know, they have some sort of impressive lift, or lifts, and they work in an office. <laughs> that would be quite interesting, actually, to hear that from somebody, from one of you guys. I know some, some guys in my life, you know, I've across some people that never go to the gym. And I swear to God, they could outlift me day one. They've never had a barbell in their hand, never gone to the gym, but they've kind of lived a you know, hard life. You know what I mean? Like, I've got a couple of my guys in my mind who, are, I mean, the, the form will be shit house on the deadlift, on the squat, whatever. But I reckon they could outlift me, some of these guys. There's one concrete that I grew up with um, who he never trained, never trained, and he was muscular as hell. He was a concreter, right? <laughs> so, you know, heavy work. Um, but I always kind of wondered, like, man, is he just a genetic marvel or what's going on here? It didn't occur to me, like, he's, he's, he trains every day, essentially. You know, I drive to work, park my car, go to work, take hand over do some observations, push some drugs, give some drugs, do a whole lot of talking, a whole lot of walking, a whole lot of thinking, you know. Never in my, in my daily job do I have to lift something heavy or... Anyway. So, uh, some of these people are greasing the groove without even knowing. You know, each time they pick up a, a heavy wheelbarrow, that's one rep. And then they take it for a farmer's carry. They're not, they're not thinking I'm doing a farmer's carry. They're thinking I need to get the shit from here to here. Or they need to spread this gravel around. It's not sets and reps. It's like, let's get the job done so I get paid. It's a different mindset. It's a different mindset. Um, so, it, like, if it wasn't for my, me training here, you know, I would be a weak guy, man. I'd be skinny or fat, depending. I mean, my appetite is usually not that great anyway. If, if I didn't train, I wouldn't have an appetite, I don't think. Um, I was a scrawny little kid and I would have stayed a scrawny dude all my life. Certainly my dad is, is skinny. I mean, he's got a bit of a beer gut now, but he's a skinny guy, skinny arms, skinny legs, skinny everything. Um, so if it wasn't for me training in the gym, I'd be weak because I don't really have anywhere else to go for this. Um, there's been some people like, you know, my dad's generation have said, why are you spending so much freaking money on these damn weights? Like it's hundred, hundred bucks a wheel here. You know, for $50 a ton, you can get some rubble and shift it from one end of the backyard to the other. Have a wheelbarrow, shovel, you know, put in the load, take it over there, tip it over, come back. 
He said, do that one, once or twice a day, you're going to be exhausted. I'm, and so when I hear that sort of shit, I'm like, that's basically laboring. It's a labor job. Um, and I know it works because these, these people are brutally strong. It's functional movement. I know the, fun the word functional in fitness is, is, is a big thing. But if you want to get functional, do something with it. You know, cut, cut a tree down. I don't know if, you've ever, if you guys have ever swung an axe. But uh, in my last property, we had a tree. It was a gum tree, a uh, native tree here in Australia. That was kind of like, it wasn't a big tree. But, you know, it was maybe kind of like, kind of that fat. Um, around the trunk. And I cut it down with an axe. And my dad had a chance. always so like, no, no, I'm like, no. I want to have a go with this, <laughs> with this axe. That shit wrecked me, man. Swinging a, an axe, not like this. But you're swinging it like a rotational force, like that. And you've got to swing it kind of near the ground, right? Because you don't want to stump to be knee high. So that's hard work. Really, really hard work. So that the term function to me is, is that that's a functional thing. You're actually laboring. Um, imagine if you did that every day. Would that guy need to do core work? Would that guy need to do crunches, planks, or whatever else? Side planks? That's all you need, man. So if that guy basically decided to just to get good at the deadlift, went home, put some plates on the bar and just practice the movement, practice the neuromuscular action of, of moving in that pattern, that guy would be brutal. Um, anyway, just some food for thought. As I was digging, I, I just, I was, that, that's the sort of stuff that was kind of passing through my mind. You know, just laboring, laboring every day. Oh man. The one thing that, would, that came up in my mind as well while I was doing it was, you know, muscle imbalances would be very frequent amongst laborers, I think. You know, if you're right handed, you got the shovel this way, you're using your left leg to push the the shovel in, you know, and uh, and then you pick it up, and then you're throwing it this way. You know, certain imbalances will form there. You know, the left bicep is working more, the right lat is working more, maybe the left glute is working more because you know you're holding the thing in one way. So <laughs> while I was uh, working, I tried to switch hands. Felt awkward as hell, but you know, I was trying to switch hands up and use the other side. But you know, if I counted each rep, like easily 80% more in my dominant kind of way, my dominant side. So, you know, if the laborer was to, you know, even out, you know, how it worked, it's, it's really unrealistic, right? Because you're, so, most of these guys are not thinking about training, they're thinking about getting the job done. Like if you're an electrician, you're not going to screw a screw with your right hand and then be like, oh yeah, that's enough, we'll do the left. Most people are not ambidextrous, like, 
Most people are just thinking about the job. You know, somebody like me, who trains and thinks about muscle imbalances and evening out the sides and all this sort of stuff, I still have muscle imbalances, let alone if somebody spent 20 years doing a, you know, concrete or your landscaper or some, something like that. You know, these guys will definitely have uh, muscle imbalances. In, in fact, a lot of these guys actually have uh, bad backs. And, uh, you know, makes me think, like, is it just the muscle imbalances and stuff, you know? <sighs> All right. All right, we'll do 80 now for 20. When I catch my breath, and then uh, we'll, uh, we're not gonna do 100 for 20 again, because that time, last time was the vomit video. I'm not ready for that shit yet, so. We'll do this for 20, and then we'll do 100 for 10. And then we'll see how we go from there. Maybe 120 for 10, we'll see. Oh yeah, I'm definitely fatigued now. Oh man, bugged. Mad respect to those laborers. One interesting fact is that uh, it's actually proven, research has proved it, that tradies or laborers tend to have a longer life expectancy than people that work in offices, people that uh, work off a chair. How interesting is that? You know, when I grew up, my parents said to me, you're not gonna be a laborer. You're gonna go to uni, you're gonna get some sort of education. You know? It's ironic, isn't it? The people who are doing the hard yards for a living are out living the people who are sitting in offices and have an easier life. 
Bizarre, man. Bruce Lee said it, man. Running water doesn't go stale. Running water doesn't turn stale. You gotta keep the engine running. Twenty-five minutes in, huh? All right, from now on, it's tense. Whew. All right. I swear, man, these uh, warm-up sets are a lot more difficult than the top sets. Freaking rep work, man. Hard yards. I actually plan to do some pull-ups today as well. I had my first pull-up training session uh, probably three, four days ago. Four days ago, five days ago, something like that. Ended up doing a pyramid set all the way up to eight, nine. So one set of one, two sets of two. I wanted to do that today as well. But no way, man, I'm wasted already. All right, 100. Whew, uh, loaded 140. Try and get five here. Oh man. Gonna sleep well tonight, that's for sure. Be interesting to see how I go with this one set here of 140 times five. I reckon this set will tell me if, I'm gonna be, if I'll be able to hit 180 today or, or what my uh, top set is gonna be. Jelly legs, pumped lower back from all the digging uh, and just general lethargy. I feel real tired. All right, let's see what I got. 140 times five.
Gee, that felt heavy. That felt really heavy. Central nervous system is telling me something. Usually I take 160 here for three, but I'll do it for one, <sighs> given that I'm screwed. That felt heavy as well. That felt heavy, but it also felt kind of quick as well, if that makes sense. Like the bar on my shoulders feels really heavy. But when I kind of start going down, it feels a little lighter in, in a weird sense. So uh, I put it, I loaded 180 now. So see how this moves. It's, the central nervous system is a weird thing. Really what I should have done today was done the workout first and then done the the laboring second. Uh, I didn't think it was gonna be that hard to be honest. I thought, you know, whatever, you know, I'll take it, take it slow. And I wasn't gonna leave it half done as well. So I kept going, it took me about two to three hours because I had to prep the ground as well. I had to dig some dirt out, kind of level it out. And so took a fair bit of time. Well, anyway, it is what it is. Just makes you appreciate what the topic of the video today is, which is these freaking laborers, man. <laughs> man, what are some of the hardest jobs I'm trying to think now? I think landscape will be up there. Landscaping, you know, wherever you have to kind of use heavy machinery or, 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 or dig, um, concreting is stuff. What else is stuff? Demolition work is stuff. Anyway, any, any work like that where you kind of have to spend yourself physically. All right, let's see what 180 feels like. What are we, 34 minutes in?
I reckon there's a little bit more room there. Let's take it off to 185. The downside of these one take videos that I'm doing nowadays is that I can't pause the video, well I can but I don't want to and check out the footage to see how it looks um, but that felt alright so usually my feelings are worse than what it looks like so if I felt kind of alright it must have been pretty good looking so 185, see if I, how far I can take it today I feel tired but I'll go by the speed of the bar. That's gonna be my indicator. When the bar slows down and I get stuck halfway, I'll call it quits. <sighs> like I said before, the good thing about these later sets is that the breathing settles down. Like it's not so much about muscular endurance anymore, it's just purely max, you know, tension to the muscle and max uh, central nervous system activation. So it's a lot more comfortable feeling lifting. All right, 185, and I'm not, not I'm probably not resting long enough. Um, but screw it, man. This is not a mid day. This is an indication whether I get 5% more today. I know it makes no difference to me in my long-term goal. So let's see how it feels. Look at my hair, man. Tell me guys, did that feel good as well? Would that look good? Oh, fuck. I'm telling you man, the days where you feel like shit, you feel you lift alright. Can't leave it there man, I gotta go up. Alright, so this is 190. I haven't done this way for a little while now. Pretty much month easy. What is this? End of May. Probably two months. So let's see how this moves. I felt like the last lift was technically executed really well. Kind of got my uh, timing right. Got my balance right. So, kind of felt pretty good. All right, let's see one on. Oh, fuck me. That felt alright as well. 
180, 185, 190, all felt the same. Let's go 195. I just had a thought right now, should I hit 197 and a half? A bigger jump, because that would be my PR. That would be a PR. This is gonna tie my PR. This is where you gotta check your ego. This is where you gotta check yourself and be like, what for? 197 and a half is not my goal. 200 is not my goal. 300 is my goal. So, don't skip steps. Stay true to yourself, have your eye on the long-term goal and just one foot in front of the other. Don't let greed, don't let uh, ego get in, get in your way, you know. Okay, so one, 197 is, 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 I could have had it today. I don't care, I'll get it eventually. But in terms of today, follow the rhythm, follow, follow the working sets, follow your brain, you know. Basically, don't overreach. It will come. All right. 195 kilos. It's going to be my... Equal my, my PR, basically, of a couple of months ago. Let's see if I got it in me today. Now I'm thinking to myself, what if I didn't do all these damn sets in the warm-up? Last time I did 195, it was basically a sprint to the top. I'm talking doubles, triples, fives, from an empty bar all the way to 195. Today I've labored all day, all day, two hours a day, two hours for the day, and uh, done a whole bunch of uh, warm-up sets, and I hit 195. Felt like a battle, don't know how it looked, but I'm confident that that's the end of the session today. I'm gonna feel quite happy about today actually because as I mentioned, it hasn't been a smooth ride to a max test today, um, but I'm pretty confident that I'm on the right track in terms of my training. Um, the high repetition stuff is working, it seems. So I'll continue on, on the same footpath and uh, hopefully I can hit 200 in the next, you know, in the future so thank you for watching and uh, if you have any questions let me know let me know what you guys do for a living as well it doesn't have to be overly specific I don't you know like if you're if you don't disclose that information I'm quite happy but just in terms of you know intellectual conversation and, and discussion it'd be interesting to know what you guys do because uh, you know some of you guys have really strong backs some of you guys really have strong legs and I want to know like is it the previous kind of uh, athletic endeavor or is it your job like do you lift heavy shit every day for a living are you a bricklayer you know if you lift thousands of bricks every single day, you're pretty much going to have a strong back. So anyway, just for my own kind of mind, if you guys care to discuss that with me, let me know in the comments and uh, I'd love, it, love to discuss that with you. Catch, you. catch you tomorrow in the next workout. Cheers.